Today is February 24th, it's a bit of a milestone today in that the YouTube channel hit 20,000 subscribers. Uh, in the grand scheme of thing, it isn't much, but when I revived this old channel of mine about six months ago, I had 10,000 subscribers. So I doubled it up in about six months. Not bad. So this is just a vlog, a discussion about a few random topics it may or may not interest you. First of all, I want to point out the uh, consistency amongst nerds in this world. When I am teaching a particular subject, the job of the teacher is to leave out what's not necessary and to simplify things that seem complex. So in the process of leaving out things that are not necessarily necessary at this moment for the student to understand, you will be imprecise sometimes. And of course, nerds are quick to point out when you're not exactly precise. So case in point, in one of my recent Python videos, I gave an overview about what happens behind the scenes when you actually declare a variable, how the uh, Python engine does all kinds of work behind the scenes to essentially place your information that you're putting into variables into memory on your computer's RAM. And I'll stop there. We don't need to go into any more details. But of course, in the YouTube comments, some nerd was um, diligent enough to want to point out some uh, minor elements or some elements that are left out in that discussion. Again, when you are teaching a subject, a big part of the job of the teacher is to filter out the unnecessary parts of the discussion, the unnecessary elements uh, or particularities about a programming language, about something within a programming language, or any subject really. I learned this actually from martial arts and uh, teaching. When you're teaching a student, for instance, how to box, you don't try to teach them every single little thing about the body mechanic behind throwing punches and so forth because it's just too much information to take in at one time. The good coach introduces the key elements to the student and as the student masters those elements in, let's say, throwing a punch or something, then the teacher will slowly, slow introduce more details, more you know, different aspects about how to properly throw punches, how to properly move and so forth. If you try to throw it all in at the same time, you're just going to hopeless, hopelessly confuse students. So for the record, nerds, when I leave out elements in a uh, course or in a particular discussion about programming or anything, you can bet most of the time that I did it on purpose because I decided that certain elements were not required in that particular lesson. Try to keep that in mind. I got a comment from this guy named Kevin. Where can I find your courses? Very interested, sick of all those online courses because most of the teachers don't bring the, break down the material in enough depth. Well, that's one of my major criticisms of the online educational money grab that we've seen in the last seven or eight years. I've been teaching code and development since 2003. I've been, coders, I've been a coder since 1994. Now, what I think is even more important is that I come from a family of teachers. My father's a teacher, aunts, uncles, cousins, lots of teachers in my family. I've been surrounded by it my entire life. In addition to that, I've taken martial arts for nearly 30 years, different styles, and as you learn from one system of martial arts to the next, whether it be a Japanese style, a Korean style, a Chinese, et cetera, et cetera, you find that each culture, each system, each school has its own way of doing things. And that's a very important uh, lesson in teaching because what you'll find as a teacher is that different students will absorb information in different ways. Some need to hear it, some people need to see it, some people need to feel it. Now, this is all, uh, of course, dependent on what you're teaching. Like you're not going to feel code, but you're going to feel a punch. So 
that's my major criticism is that most of these people put out code training courses they're not actually teaching they're, ju they're just going over the specification and that's uh, that's not teaching that's just going over specification now you can get away with that to a certain extent with adult learners because a big part of learning how to do anything is just doing it so that's why I emphasize it on my courses write code if you want to learn how to write code you write code and what you'll find is that the act of actually typing out the code making the mistakes watching the the interpreters give you error message and so forth that will help your brain more quickly understand the fundamental concepts of software development the same thing goes for fighting by the way in martial arts when you want to learn how to fight if you want to do real martial arts you have to go out there and do it so that's why you see a lot of the sporting martial arts, whether it be the jiu-jitsu, the judo, the wrestling, the boxing, the tie boxing, the kickboxing. These guys typically are much better fighters than the so-called traditional martial arts. So they've done both. And the reason being primarily is because the sport fighters, as I just mentioned, the boxing, the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, they're always sparring. They're actually fighting. Go figure. They develop the skills, they develop an awareness, they develop the abilities that differentiate between people who can fight and people who can really fight. And that's why you saw when the rise of the, US, the UFC came about in the uh, early 90s, a lot of these traditional martial artists, these academic martial artists, they had never fought in a real situation. And then when they finally get out there and they fought in the UFC, they, they, were, they were flabbergasted. They couldn't believe that their techniques and theories didn't really work in the real world and uh, so I've always always been a big believer of getting your hands dirty into anything that you want to do if you want to start a business start a business start something small if you want to learn how to code start writing code that's why with the studio web app I integrate that concept core into the structure of the curriculum so what does that mean that means that as you're watching videos you're immediately writing code as you go along with it and the system is checking your code out and not just one or two code snippets here and there we're talking tons for instance just with these the html the css and the javascript course in studio web uh, there are 300 odd video lessons and over a thousand quiz questions and this is all structured in a very particular way to maximize learning. That's why you'll see on the YouTube channel, you'll see in the comments how people are pretty, pretty uh, impressed about how quickly they learn. Uh, there's a lot more to teaching than just going over the specification. And by the way, if there's a course where they're just running over the spec, you don't need that course. They're not teaching. They're just going over the spec. You might as well just do it yourself. You wouldn't... Um expect this type of weather in February in Montreal, Canada. This is very, very unusual, very warm, and uh, it's, a, it's a nice relief from the, the freezing cold we usually get this time of year. That is for sure. Hmm. I'll give you a quick view of the city.